Uh, and now we're very pleased to have come to the podium uh, Tony Bates, who is a clinical psychologist. He's been for 25 years in the systems world in Ireland, um, who actually left there because he decided that he wanted to try something different and set up a new program, and particularly focusing on, on prevention. So he left his job, uh, you know, much to the uh, government jobs. Some of us who have government jobs understand the risks involved, but has done something pretty remarkable. So ladies and gentlemen, Tony Bates. Thank you, Gary, and thank you, Susan. And I want to take some of that water because I've just got Susan's cold. Uh, just, li you're yeah, just listening to you. Yeah, um, it just transmitted. We were talking beforehand. Um, so, where am I? So, Ireland. Um, there's a bunch of us here today. Uh, we live on the edge all the time, at the edge of Europe. If you step off this most westerly point of Ireland, you'll only hit dry land, but the, the next dry land will be Newfoundland. Um, we've, share, we've had our share of sorrows. Um, we've, we've turned them into music and story because we live simple lives. I mean, new death and trauma and loss quite a lot, and we have long memories and we don't forget things. Um, and you can hear those echoes, I think, still in our music and even our happiest music. Um, I think that, you know, the, the way we lived and the way we survived was a lot by uh, telling stories, um, and stories not just to entertain, but to, to give shape and validation to our lives and to let people feel they weren't entirely uh, losing it, that they had the sense of, of cohesion and connection across the community. This was the first TED talk, and it has... Um, So, and we all know those edges, you know, those edges where we are move out of our comfort zone and we are lost and we're found and we're uh, both uh, terrified and exhilarated. And, but I think it's where really interesting things happen. And I think it's where it's the space within which we've chosen all of us to work. So speaking of stories, in 2006, Ireland was telling a very different story, the story of youth suicide, uh, particularly. Um, we, we had no sense really of what was going on. People had different, it was any number of views and different theories, but not really understanding what was actually happening. Was it sin? Was it selfish? Were they sick? Or was it society? What, what was happening? Um, and this had, but it created a real awareness that something was going wrong, particularly in our young adults. And just, it's interesting here, if you look at this one, um, and uh, where am I, yes. This is 2006 in north of, our, of Ireland, and you can see the rapid um, increase in suicide, which happened just in the wake of the peace process having achieved some kind of resolution. It, it does seem that when we have someone to hate and blame for everything that's wrong in our lives, it gives us a certain immunity to the self-loathing that can lead to suicide. Um, it was also self-harm that came to our attention. I know there's a lot of work on that here today, this morning. And I think the way one of our young people wrote, one of our very youth advisors, Sarah, one of early youth advisors, you know, that the thousands of teenagers who were, who were somehow managing to live their lives while secretly disintegrating, wishing for oblivion, they keep on keeping on, wondering if it is only at the edge of the cliff that the crowds appeared with nets. And that's where the conversation went. Is it just when things get really bad that we worry, or is there, is there a point in going upstream and looking at what's happening? When we do look at what's happening, we find that people really, when they first felt in need of some support, often found it very hard to find. Um, and it was the absence of finding support, the absence, the presence of stigma, I suppose, that was inherited a little bit. But I have to say stigma is not nearly the problem in this generation as it was in my uh, generation growing up. Um, but still, there was, there was a very little, who to turn to was the question that was very hard to answer. And for parents of 16, 17, 18 year olds, it was a nightmare, where do you send them? So we set up Headstrong. And from the very beginning, we took a systems approach. And we decided, that we, we took the view that a young person's mental health isn't just something that exists independent of their lives, but it's really, it, it, it relates to the relationships they have with other people and to the network of services and agencies that, that influence their lives. And then if we're to help young people, we can't just focus on them. We have to focus on strengthening agencies and services that 
that in a sense impact on them and can actually support them too. So there has to be some way that everybody changes, not just young people. We took three approaches or strands in our kind of approach to changing how Ireland thinks about young people. We got young people involved centrally and I think it's something we've done well. We have some young people here today, Amelia and Aoife, who'll be speaking at four, and then James Barry will be presenting research on Headstrong's youth engagement uh, tomorrow. So these are really worth hearing. And I think what we learned from young people is that they wanted to be heard, not helped. And I always remember one young person, the very first at a talk where Pat McGarry was present in 2006, and Sinead said, you know, if I'm in trouble, I don't want to be rescued. I don't want to be airlifted out of it. I want someone to engage with me and help me to grow through it. And it, that gave me a very strong sense of the, the approach we needed to take, that this life was life, and we needed to engage and work with what was happening, rather than to, you know, in, in any sense, have any pity or something which was disempowering. We needed to empower young people to face their lives, and we needed to discover in them the strength that they had, rather than what was wrong with them. Um, I think so. Th I think that has helped us, and uh, it has been a very strong part of Headstrong. It helped us to think very differently about young people. I think I I research has been very central, because while there was a lot of epidemiological data on the presence of distress among young people at a population level, we knew very little about what actually were the risk of protective factors in their lives. What really made the difference? And so, working with uh, UCD uh, and Barbara Dooley, and who will be also be presenting, and her team. Um, we began to investigate, you know, through the My World survey, we began to look at what are those protective factors, what are the risk factors, and we built what is probably the largest youth database in the world, um, over 1.5 billion data points, 15,000 young people completing nearly 20 scales, you know, very carefully executed, very carefully analysed, and like one of the findings we got from that is that, you know, one of the strongest predictors, um, one of the strongest predictors of, uh, of surviving it, of making it through a rough time, is the presence of one good adult in a young person's life. That is some adult who knows them personally, believes in them, and who's available to them. And that was a fantastic message to give because it empowered a whole community across the country, and it got wide publicity, to, to begin to think that they were perhaps already that one good adult that it wasn't something they should do, it was something they were doing to their own children, to their children's friends, to the kid who dropped in occasionally to play with their kid, etc. Um, so I think that's the, and uh, I'm going to come back to the data that we've since been collecting on uh, the service. I suppose the main part of our work is Jigsaw, and this is a service for young people, accessible, uh, kind of a youth-friendly main street, but very complex in terms of what is behind the door is, takes a long time to put together and get right. But it is a place where we offer direct support and where young people can access for free um, and they can self-refer. And it's for 12 to 25 year olds, I should have said that. And it's alleviating distress and building resilience. Um, so that's how we've worked. Um, when we go in, I'm going to focus on Jigsaw for most of the rest of this talk, but when we move into a community, we try to build readiness, conduct a needs and resource analysis. This is slow and important to get right, engaging young people at every level, building community capacity and ownership, involving all of the services that are concerned with welfare of young people, and then opening a hub, which is in a sense behind that hub is a matrix of supports, a menu that can be accessed by a young person dependent on their need. And bringing all that together, and that is Jigsaw. Um, what does it look like? Here's a Main Street Jigsaw in Meath. Uh, here's in Galway. Here's in Donegal when we opened. And one of the things that the young people have done, because they're in every Jigsaw, is that they've each developed a kind of a tour of Jigsaw. So to give you a sense of what it looks like, let's just watch this. <laughs> Stressing about school, exams, college. Sexuality. Work, money. Arguing with friends, boyfriend, girlfriend, parent, brother, sister. Feeling isolated, lonely, anxious, tense. Can't sleep. If you find you are struggling and would like this to change, 
Jigsaw is a free and confidential support service for young people aged between 15 to 25 in County Donegal. We support young people and promote positive mental health. You will find someone here who you can talk to about whatever is bothering you. When you come to Jigsaw, you will be welcomed by a staff member and offered some tea or coffee while we inform the support worker that you are here. Your support worker will take you through to one of our session rooms. Here you can talk about what's on your mind and the support worker can find out what's important to you. You will work together to identify your personal goals. The service offers up to eight sessions. Life is full of challenges and Jigsaw supports young people to deal with the demands of their everyday lives and finding ways to cope that suit you. Jigsaw is about listening to and supporting young people, about building on young people's strengths, about valuing and respecting young people, and about changing how Donegal thinks about young people's mental health. If you would like to find out more about Jigsaw, you can look us up on our website or you can phone us. This film was created by the Youth Advisory Panel to introduce you to Jigsaw Donegal. The app is a group of 16 to 25 year olds whose role is to voice their opinions and advise staff and management on how to improve the service. I think what's important there are two things. One is not what we do, it's the way we do it. Or at least that it matters as much as what we do. What's done is very skillful and very, I don't mean to downplay that, of course. The other thing is that what happens in Jigsaw is that it's, it's, it's led by young people themselves. So, for example, there was a young 14-year-old boy recently came to Dublin, one of the four sites in Dublin, and he had um, been brought there by family, sent there by the school because he had anger management problems. He was fighting with everybody, he was fighting with his, his siblings, and generally creating havoc. And there was a kind of sense that he needed to be treated with anger management. When the, Paul, the kind of clinical coordinator, engaged with him, Paul really took time to see what was happening and what did he want, what would make a difference in his life. And he said, you know, my granddad died 11 months ago. And he realized he was very upset and he didn't quite know how, he had never come to terms with it. And he wanted to talk about his granddad because everybody seemed to have forgotten him and he was very important in his life. His dad had never been there. And the other thing was he was worried about his mom because she had, you know, been supported by the granddad and now she was showing every sign of not, not coping so well. So he, he wanted some time with her. So the, 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 the worker over a, a period of six sessions worked with him um, and preparing him very carefully, brought the mother in, preparing, working with the mother, looked at what she needed in terms of her own grieving and then she went for therapy to a local counselling agency along with the grandmother, uh, you know, her mother, uh, because or her mother-in-law, because they were all not functioning. And then that service brought the young fella along to treat, you know, for one of the sessions. And meanwhile, the jigsaw worker helped him think about going back to school, dealing with all the predictable challenges that would be there, etc., etc. So what became, what was sent, labelled as anger management, became a whole intergenerational piece of work that was quite significant. Um, now. So, but it's not just that direct support service, it's also working with the system and all the, the, the relationships and work people in the community who are uh, concerned with the welfare of young people. And it's working broadly with the community itself. So that, and even in the case of this young boy, there's a sense that the school began to see him differently. His family saw him differently. The community learned something. And there was, and that constant sense of trying to, to, to change uh, to, to make the elephant dance, not, not just to, to kind of graft on some kind of best practice program, but actually to transform, and to come back to the theme of this conference, the whole system. Um, does it work? A uh, very important question. We knew we'd have to figure this out. We knew we needed somebody really good to help us do it, and I kid you not, more resource and time was spent finding this man than was put, invested in finding bin Laden um, we travelled the world to find somebody really good, and we found him. We, we, we found him hiding in Louisville, in Kentucky. Um, and this is uh, Dr. Bob. Um, 
Bob Ilbeck, uh, just sitting here, has been our secret sauce because what he helped us to do was to build a kind of a data system to track what was happening, to, to take real care so that we could uh, begin to learn about what we were doing. You've got to understand there's no evidence base for jigsaw. We're, we had to build that. We had to find it. There's bits of evidence here and there, but not for this in, in Ireland. So we had to do that carefully. And building uh, data, but also not just building it, but building it in a way that it could be presented and used by people who were in jigsaw sites, that they could constantly refine what they're doing in the light of data. So this is all in real time. This is what the number of young people served up to last Wednesday. Um, and you can see the age spread, and the curve of that graph is remarkably like Pat McGarry's famous curve, um, which is interesting. And I think it's interesting we're engaging both male and female, and that there's a lot of self-referral and parent referral and GP. There's many others, but these are just the top three. Um, and that this is what happens. There's brief intervention, six, eight sessions. There's a, a great deal of individual case consultation, which is where Jigsaw might not be the right place, but great care is taken to triage them into the more, the more, and that's where those relationships, that system strengthening pieces is vital. Um, and then brief contact, which might be one or two sessions. Um, and then tracking everything that's happening. And I'm not going to go into this data, but Bob is presenting this tomorrow afternoon too in much more detail, but you can see that, you know, um, broadly speaking, anxiety, anger, family problems, um, and the other question then was, well, is this, are these just small problems or are they significant and, and you know, intense? And so in 2014, we've actually, or 13, we tracked everyone who was treated with brief interventions. And we found using the core 10 that, you know, actually 89% are at clinical levels of distress. Putting it another way, it's, it's if you can think when they came in, this was how they presented uh, in terms of distress levels. And when they left, um, this was how they presented. And this is on average of 4.2 sessions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's very nice. Now, you know, it's great news that somehow there's a reduction in distress, but of course the much more interesting question is, have they learned resilience? Have they learned to cope? Will they be ready for the next time the storm hits? And I think that's now where research is moving to in terms of really you know, tracking what happens and what's learned and what's gained. Um, is, the other question is, is Jigsaw occupying a place broadly within the local community? And this is a complex uh, program, but it, it basically measures to what extent Jigsaw is seen to be central in communities and to what extent it has relationships with other services. And the degree to which Jigsaw is located in the center is the degree to which it seemed to be an integrating force within a community. And, and the evidence is it is. I think the, what the question is, um, for me is does the, you know, we're trying to build a community ownership. If you tried to close down Jigsaw, you'd have riots on the street in, in, in Donegal, in Galway, in Kerry, in Offaly. Um, and that's not something people do normally in related reaction to mental health uh, services. But I think one of the real uh, evidence of, of community ownership is in Offaly, which is one of the 32 counties in Ireland. And, you know, football, Gaelic football is the lifeblood of kids. And on every jersey, the, the county team, the, all the club teams, on the back of the jersey, there's Jigsaw Offaly. So the whole thing is that Jigsaw at our backs. Um, so I think, again, we've been, it's important to, to build a story, it's important to tell a story and to keep that going, and again, thanks to Bob. Summarising, I'd say Jigsaw supported a significant number of young people, almost half of whom are male, several referrals partly attributed to youth involvement, young people present with significant complex developmental and mental health needs they present. A uh, variety magnitude of complexity of issues is, is argues for really robust training and supervision. Outcomes are in excess of expectation. 94% of young people achieve all or, mo or, or more of the goals that they set in their initial session. Um, Jigsaw is emerging, that's across 10 sites. As Jigsaw is emerging as a significant integrative component of the system of mental health services and supports. And the positive response of young people to Jigsaw validates an early intervention model. Where to next? Well, we've grown um, to 10 sites, which is really 10 counties, uh, and many other counties are in preparation. 
the latest in this year, we were, uh, Jigsaw was deemed to be a national program and given recurrent mainstream funding, it had been quite difficult to raise every penny up to then. That, that is the biggest um, achievement for us and we didn't always know what had happened. Um, when it was announced that the next step is Jigsaw in Dublin City Centre and uh, Cork and several other communities, there was a fantastic response. Hearing that yes just made people smile um, and it was a very moving. They were gathered just to hear that yes in the city centre. Um, what are some learnings? I'd say um, listen to what young people are saying. Take time to build strong coalitions of stakeholders, sorry. Uh, and, and invest in them and keep investing in them. Just because you get there doesn't mean you're there. You've got to keep working on those. It's like marriage. You've got to keep putting something in to keep them alive. Um, build capacity to track data from the very beginning and revisit the question, why are we doing this very often? I love the story of uh, John F. Kennedy. He visited NASA in 63, six days before he was assassinated. And he saw to his left a man standing in overalls and went over to him and he said, what do you do here? And it was the janitor and he responded, I'm working to put a man on the moon. Vision is the lifeblood of any organization, movement, um, and I think it's what keeps us moving forward. And it's, it's like the stories our forefathers told to each other. They, they provide us with a way to kind of tolerate the setbacks. This is very hard work. There's a lot of setbacks. There's a lot of pain involved. Um, and I think when times are tough, vision is often the first casualty. Um, and when times are tough, the first thing you've got to get back is vision. Um, so what is our vision for young people? I think um, our vision is, has got to be about their phenomenal capacity to survive and come back from very appalling experiences in their lives. When they experience mental ill health, a curtain falls, regardless of how many young people we've supported and we don't know exactly, we don't know exactly what this young person is going through. So we need to kind of listen. We need to help them to build a bridge so that we learn what's happening for them. If our engagement with young people teaches us anything, surely it's, it's, it must be an openness to being surprised. The surprise that a young person experiences when they're listened to and allowed to see that what they're feeling has a reason, that they make sense, that they're not weird, and that, that actually that there is a way to move through this. I think also the surprise in us when we realize we've been trusted when we realize we've made a connection, we've been able to help someone to put shape on their lives and that we're not weird completely either. I think when that happens, I think there's real possibility of transformation um, in, in not just their lives, but our lives. And I think this is what's happening. It's what's happening in people, with people here today and across the world in so many centers that are working to help young people. Um, and I think it's where, to come back to the theme of tomorrow, I think when that happens, when that meeting happens, and we see and they see and we're surprised, I think dignity is reborn. I think we return young people to, to their dignity. And I, I think in doing that, we're also returned to our own dignity. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Good job. Awesome job. We have about two minutes here questions? before we are breaking for, uh, for our coffee. Would anybody like to have any questions to our panelists today? Don't all jump up at once. We'll call on people. I have friends out there. I don't see any questions. Uh, well, I will tell you that I have been asked to say uh, two things. Number one, we have a question. Yes, please. Here's support. The question is about whether or not Jigsaw engages in peer support and how so. And um, yes, it, 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 you know, again, we're growing and uh, we're learning a lot about you know, what uh, is needed. Um, this morning there was a presentation by Jean Ford from Dublin uh, Jigsaw D15 on peer education uh, within schools in Dublin. Many, many thousands of young people have been through that program. And there are other isolated examples. I think what, having a platform like Jigsaw is allowing us 
to, to move out into schools and to can begin to build. There's like a framework within which it is possible to have uh, programs that can, can grow. But we're, we're young. We're really just, we've 10 sites open really just in the last two years. We had for a long time, it was just a couple. Um, so we're just getting started. Watch this space. Thank you. Uh, do we have any more questions? We've got four microphones around the room. I think that might be the end for questions. Great. Well, what I would say is, first of all, please be on time for the next set of concurrent sessions. And if you are a tabletop presenter, please make sure to especially be on time because that's sort of a situation where everybody's presenting at the same time. So if you're not there on time, then people will not have you there, and that would be bad. So anyway, thank you so much to our panelists today in the afternoon plenary session. We have some us. gifts for them, and enjoy your coffee break, and thank enjoy the rest much. of the afternoon. Good job, people.